Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Divorced Woman's Guide podcast. How are you doing today? Now, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. We release every single week, and you especially don't want to miss today's episode because I am here with my dear friends, Catherine and Karen of My Divorce Solution. Hello, ladies. How are you? Hello, Hello. Wendy. Hi, guys. I am really looking forward to our conversation today. You guys, we are going to talk about three hidden financial hacks that they want you guys to avoid so that you don't look back on your divorce and say, oh, I could have, should have, would have. So before we dive in, I want to share a little bit more with you all about both Catherine and Karen. So Karen has for over 30 years worked in the legal field as a paralegal and business manager. And during her career, she has served as an affiliated member of the Pennsylvania Bar Association and president-elect of the ALA, which is the Association of Legal Administrators. Karen now serves clients and the professional team in her role as legal liaison. She is also the mom of three children and has one grand daughter. And Karen is extremely passionate about helping women in all that she does. And Miss Catherine, after 25 years in the financial industry, and after having raised five children and endured her own experience with divorce, Catherine became a certified divorce financial analyst, which is also known as a CDFA. She's also a trained mediator and a daily money manager. Catherine is collaboratively trained and was a member of the Bucks County Collaborative Law Group. She is fully dedicated to helping her clients understand and navigate all aspects of divorce, including planning a secure financial future post-divorce, which is so incredibly important. And as you both know, and I have said many, many times, I wish I knew you guys five and a half years ago because I would have started my divorce process very differently. And that's why I love having you guys on my podcast and in the summits that I do, because you guys share so much incredible information with our audience. And I know I teased it a little bit, but both of you have a, you know, a heart string attached to the work that you do. So what motivates you? What inspired you to do this work that you guys do today? Well, let's just start with what you just said. You know, you wish you would have known us five years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. If if we could help everyone that says that to us, it would be fantastic. You know, that would have, could have, should have. Hindsight's always your best sight. And we just see it professionally time and time again, the stories that just motivates us to keep going until we can reach everybody out there because everyone deserves this kind of um, knowledge. Absolutely. Karen, how about you? Well, I have a heart for empowering people with resources and tools. And because of my own divorce, and you would have thought I would have fared very well being in the legal industry with access to the best attorneys in in our county. I, I spent tons of money. I didn't have financial clarity. And I ended up in court several times beyond my what I considered our resolution, the divorce decree. So when I met Catherine and we joined forces, I've been all in ever since then because I we both are very committed to making things better for people coming behind us. Yeah, and and boy, do I know that you guys do that because I know many clients that have come your way that are so grateful for the work that you guys do. And that's why I wanted to talk to you guys today about sort of these hidden financial hacks, things that you guys see on a daily basis that the rest of us are blind to. So I really want to turn it over to you guys. Where do we start? Where do people, like, what is what is the information that our audience needs to know? What are those three light bulbs, right, that you get to fill for them? Because like we said, the after fact, after fact is a lot more costly. So true. The first starts with understanding what the components of your marital state are, and how do you get access to that information? And so, you know, we always get shocked when people tell us, I can't get my tax return. You know, you sign the tax return just because he won't give it to you doesn't mean that you don't have a right to get it. You know, so that's an example of accessing some documents that are part of your estate. 
So how do we do that? How do we get the tax return if we don't have our hands on it or if we've been locked out of the accountant or if the spouse just says you can't get it? Karen's always instructing our clients how to do that, Karen, aren't you? I am. And it comes up more than I ever expected. You know, they'll say, well, I don't have a copy. The accountant won't give me a copy. I don't have online access. I don't have the password. But you sign the tax return. So you can call the accountant, you can call H&R Block, and even though your spouse may have the access code or the, I guess, the direct access to the accountant, you're entitled. And while I tell my clients, if they don't give you that access, I'll get on the call with you and you will have your tax returns the next day. They are your property as well. And it's not, you know, an adverse to your spouse. It's just you're entitled to it. And it's information not only that you're entitled to, but you should know. Yeah. You could go on, you could go on the IRS website and there's a form you could fill out there to get your transcript. So you could yes. do that on your own. You don't need anybody else to do that for you. And mm-hmm. if we're sitting here right now in January, you're going to notice there's a lot of paperwork coming. There's 1099 statements coming. You'll see right on the envelopes, it'll say tax document enclosed. If you never looked before, make this the year that you're looking. And if it's coming electronically to your spouse, when your tax return is filled out or filed, getting ready to get filed, before you sign that tax return, make a copy, request a copy. It doesn't matter if you never did that before. Don't be afraid of putting red flags up. It's your right to have a copy of that tax return. And remember, along with the tax return comes supporting documents. So you would want to see the supporting documents that are sent to your preparer and make a copy of them. Take a picture on your phone, whatever you have to do. The timing for this is right now. Yeah. And and I'm glad that you said that because I have heard for some people that, you know, oh, my accountant is best friends with my spouse. So how do I get around this? How do I, you know, not put up those red flags? And I'm so glad that you shared the IRS website because, you know, again, like I I didn't know that, (laughs) you know, I happen to know where they get filed in my house, but my, you know, in my marriage, Marriage, my father-in-law was our accountant. So imagine me trying to go to my former father-in-law, right? And say, hey, can I put a copy of our tax return, right? Talk about red flags. And so that's, you know, again, something I wish I knew because, and instead I just paralyzed and decided to do nothing because I didn't know that there were other resources. So that's an amazing tip. I know you just helped a whole lot of people. So what's another hack that you can share with our audience today? Could I just give one follow-up to that one? One way to make people nervous about when you're requesting documentation, and this could be another one with your financial planner, when you want a copy of your brokerage statements, put everything in writing. Email your tax preparer and say, can I please have a copy of the tax return that you had me sign that I filed jointly on it and let them respond to in writing that they're not giving you that information. It makes people very nervous when you are documenting things. So don't be afraid to send an email requesting it and asking for an email in writing in return. Okay. I just want to insert here. The IRS Uh-oh, here form. we go. Lots of inserting. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the IRS form 4506. Okay. So you can get a transcript or you can get your full tax return. There's a form you can fill out or you can get your transcript directly online. But the okay. form is 4506. 4506. Wonderful. Thank you, Karen. Sure. Okay, let's move on to knowing what your options are and interpreting not only just your marital settlement agreement, but what the components are of your estate in relation to divorce. So everyone knows that there's assets and debt, and some people think it's my net worth statement, but a net worth statement doesn't really relate to divorce. You have to know what your options are with each of these assets so that you're able to get on to our next uh, topic. But just this morning, Karen, share with uh, Wendy's viewers about an agreement that came to the table. You know, when an attorney sends an agreement, it's like 25 pages long. We say it turns into like a word uh, word project, like an algebra because it's always a word problem for everybody. You just see numbers scattered throughout. You see language scattered throughout. But who at that point, when you're ready to sign, are ready to really understand what's going on here? Talk a little bit about that, Karen, because I find it so fascinating when you review these agreements and people don't realize what they're about to sign off on. These agreements come to us and I use our portrait to 
to reconcile the agreement with. And it is like solving a word problem because marital settlement agreements aren't in the form of financial statement or in the form of numbers. It's in the form of paragraphs. So it's really easy to miss things that you wouldn't otherwise miss if it was just in a number format. So the things that you really want to pay attention to is make sure the dollar amounts are stated exactly like you remembered them or you negotiated them. That's super important. They can easily be changed and you can't unchange them. The second thing is make sure that the provisions for whatever asset or debt you're dividing, if it doesn't happen. So if someone's supposed to refinance a home or if someone's supposed to make payments for X amount of years or every month or whatever, if that doesn't happen, then what? Because if that's not clear and it can't just say, oh, a contempt petition will be filed. You need better provisions in that, and you can ask for better provisions in that. And if it would be a contempt petition, petition, then okay, if the party is in contempt and I have to file, then that party needs to pay my attorney's fees. There's all kinds of things you can ask your attorney to do that are very important because if you end up in court after this, you're going to be paying a ton of money to try to enforce just because it's there. isn't really helpful on the other end if you are not fully protected. Another thing that you really want to pay attention to is what if someone is disabled or passes and if I have financial obligations owed to me. That marital settlement agreement should be really clear about how you're protected. Is there life insurance proceeds in place? Is the spouse's estate obligated to you for the outstanding obligations? Make sure that you really spent the time with your attorney to feel protected and secure so that if something would go wrong, not that you're planning on it, but you should anticipate it. What does that mean to me? And, you know, well, how, what is my exposure to additional attorney's fees? Yeah. And I think that's so important because so many times, you know, we have this image in our head of like, oh God, I have to call the lawyer and ask them another question, like another 15 minute billable. And something that I heard that you just said is that that's cheaper than what's going to happen if you don't ask the question later on. And I can even tell everybody from firsthand experience, I have had to go back and renegotiate with my ex-husband three times. Okay. Three times. And my divorce has been final four years. Three times in four years. And I have spent five figures every single time I've had to go back and fix things because I was afraid to ask questions or afraid to put up a red flag. So huge information, huge advice. Thank you for sharing that. Sorry, I just, I had to share that because I know that a lot of my listeners are thinking to themselves, oh my God, I, you know, how much money am I... I've already spent this much money. How much more money am I going to have to spend? And it's, it is a marathon, you guys. It is about a long-term game. It is about thinking about your future, right? And sometimes you got to pull some extra money out of your pocket now, but it's going to save you a heck of a lot more later on. It's so true, Wendy. And, you know, people think I'm at the end of the road here. I'm so happy. I'm finally done. I don't want to rock the boat. We got to this agreement. I'm sure I'm protected. You know, I don't want to go back and make my attorney angry. I don't want to ask these questions that might ruin my deal. But just you just proved it. That's another would have, could have, should have, because you went back three times. And there's so many people that have to go back because they're, you know, their agreements aren't enforceable or protected. So good. It's yeah. a good thing to remember if you're out there. Yep. And no request is unreasonable. You know, in some agreements, when the spouse has been especially difficult, we'll, we'll ask the attorney to put in the agreement any transfer of asset. Can you just bring the title? When you sign the agreement, sign the titles. When you sign the agreement, sign the deed so that you're not waiting. Because if you have a very difficult spouse, you're going to be waiting. It's another game that's going to be played. Just get it done. And that's not unreasonable to ask. No. And I will also say that I hear so many times too, oh, he's not going to do that to me or they're not going to screw me over. And then at the end of the day, when they get to the final print, they're like, oh my God, I didn't even know that they snuck that in or, you know, and, and I'm not, 
I am in no way trying to, you know, imply that there aren't amicable divorces, that there aren't people out there that, you know, are honest, because I know that there are. And I also know people who have thought their spouse to be something that when divorce comes, you guys, all bets are off the table. It really is. It's, it's an emotional, even though it's a business transaction, right? It's, it's emotional. I remember if you're being amicable and yeah, I agree. There are a lot of people out there amicable and they'll say, oh, we'll just, just, let's just sign. We'll take care of this later. Well, if you're really that amicable, you don't mind signing right then and there. This way we don't have to disrupt each other's lives again to come back together to do this signature or what have you. So just get it done then. Yes. Things crop up. Yes. Yeah. They do. (laughs) So our last hack is about compromise. Listen, divorce, each party has to compromise, but be careful when you're compromising. One of the most important reports that we have in our financial uh, portrait is the table of considerations. Everyone just goes through and has an opinion on what asset they want to keep, what debt they think that the other party should pay, and so forth. But before you negotiate away any asset or debt, understand what the implication is to you. I'm all for compromising. So if it's easier for you to keep the house or you have an emotional attachment to the house, okay, you could keep the house. But what are you negotiating away? What do you have to consider when keeping that house? You know, how do you get your spouse off of the mortgage? Do you have to sign something right there at the table? Do you have to have in your agreement that you're allowed two years to get that process completed? You know, what's the difference between an appraisal and a Zillow report? Karen always goes through this with our clients. If you want to talk about the house a little bit of some things to think about before negotiating that away, it makes a big difference. Right. So. There are some states and some counties that will factor in the realtor's fees as a deduction for when you're dividing the home. Some some counties do, some counties don't. Some states are different with that as well. A lot of people prepay or pay in escrow taxes and insurance. And so if you're selling the home or you're refinancing, where does that check go and are you entitled to it? Sometimes it can be quite substantial, especially if the tax bill or insurance bill has just been paid. Uh, Regarding appraisals, to Catherine's point, there is a difference between a bank appraisal and a realtor appraisal or a formal appraisal versus even a Zillow report. And in our markets today, anything goes. You could get an appraisal and you could sell the home for hundreds of thousands of dollars more. We just experienced that last week with a client of ours. So this table of considerations is very specific to your specific assets and debts and those types of questions. And I could go through more regarding the home, but uh, for uh, lack lack of time, we'll just leave it at that. But just know that with every asset and every debt, there is something to consider before you negotiate that away. And if you can bring that to your attention before you sign anything, it's the best time to do that. Yeah, because you guys never know. I mean, there are things that could be offered to you where you're going to be paying a crap ton of taxes on the back end for where it would have been advantageous to take perhaps a lower sum, you know, in a savings account that wouldn't have the same tax implications. So again, you don't know what you don't know. And there is a reason that those of us out there who do what we do (laughs) are here to advise you is in your best interest. Because again, you can't go back and renegotiate or trade, you know, any of your assets or liabilities. You know, it's again, it's so important to know things up front. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to ask because you deserve the information. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, and I'll admit, you know, the financial aspect of my divorce was absolutely terrifying. It was the most terrifying part. I remember in the beginning, the discovery phase, I remember I sat on it for like six weeks and I would cry anytime I would have to like, look at, you know, having to supply these documents. And I would cry because I didn't know what half of them were. I didn't even know where half of them existed. And, you know, part of the reason I was crying was because I couldn't believe that I had let myself be so uninformed about so many things. And, you know, which of course then dovetails into like, how could I have trusted this person so wholeheartedly to, you know, then discover a whole lot of stuff that I ended up discovering on the 
you know, on the outset. So the best thing you can do, and I know how uncomfortable it is to say, I know jack crap about my finances and I don't even know what my tax return says. It's okay. Just get over the fear of having to say it because staying in that place of fear is only going to hurt you. It's going to punish you really on the back end and just get out in front of it, educate yourself, consult with folks like My Divorce Solution and just get the knowledge, get the support that you guys need. It's so important. It is so costly to have to go back and do things again. So Catherine and Karen, any other last words of advice that you want to share with our audience before we also talk about something fun that we're all going to be at together? Well, you know that knowledge is is powerful, but in divorce, knowledge is absolutely everything. And if you're asking questions and you're not getting the answers, it's time to ask somebody else. And don't be afraid because like I said, you're worth it. You deserve it. And nobody has the right to tell you anything otherwise. So good. Preparing for divorce is essential. Because when you go to a divorce attorney or a mediator, the first thing they're going to ask is, what do you want? And if you're saying what you want from an emotional perspective, that's where the train comes off the rails. So we're so proud of our divorce preparation platform uh, at My Divorce Solution. We just launched the online portal this past week based on mine and Catherine's professional experiences, the integrating the legal requirements with the financial assessment. So check it out. We're here for you. And we're so thrilled and proud that we're able to provide these services to individuals and families facing divorce. Yes. And you guys definitely check out Catherine and Karen's website, mydivorcesolution.com. They've got so much incredible and valuable information um, and they are a wealth of information. I send many clients to them myself and uh, so much so that, you know, I, again, I wish I knew them five years ago. <laughs> you guys would have been like the first people I hired. <laughs> um, and even though we've known each other for years, I absolutely love and respect both of you guys so much in your work ethics and, uh, we're going to get to finally meet in person in just under two months. And I would really love for you guys to share with our audience today about the event that you both are co-hosting um, and putting on. And myself and an incredible lineup of speakers will also have the opportunity to be at. So please share from your hearts about the event. No, gosh, I'm very passionate about this because I truly believe that this is an event that I wish... I had 11 years ago when I went through my divorce, but we feel the same way about you. And we are so honored that you're one of our speakers and that we're finally going to meet you face to face. Yay! <laughs> so exciting. But if you're listening out there and you feel like you do not have a community around you, I mean, I'm sure you have friends and you have loved ones and you have family members, but do you have a group of women who know what it's like to go through divorce? Not a place that you're going to go and bitch about whoever, but a place that you're going to go and you're going to realize that, you know what, divorce is not my entire story. It's a part of my story. And we are together going to change the dialogue. There's nothing to be ashamed about. And some really thing, really big things to be excited about if you've gone through the journey. So we put together the Mrs. To Me event. This is in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Eventually, we'll be spreading throughout the nation. So that'll be exciting. But it's a group of wonderful women coming together to be inspired, to be empowered, to just feel good, to share their experiences and to listen to some speakers, motivate them or really just make them feel good. And we're going to change the dialogue. So it's going to be a fun filled ladies weekend. I'm sure Karen wants to go on and talk a little bit more about, about it with everyone. Sure. I like to talk about the swag. So many <laughs> amazing sponsors and a lot of the speakers have contributed swag for you all. So we're very excited about that. So bring your girlfriends and get ready to be empowered and inspired as you move ahead into your new life. Yeah. And you guys, I'm taking the stage with 
my dear, dear friends, people like Renee Bauer, Michelle Dempsey, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Cohen, to name a few. And it's really, when you get all of, I just got goosebumps. When you get all of us powerhouses in a room, you know magic is going to happen. And we all are very, very dear friends. We love each other. We support each other. It's going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. We are spending from Friday evening through, what is it, Sunday lunchtime together, just immersing ourselves in community and conversation and connection. It's going to be amazing. I have a special coupon code that Catherine and Karen have given to me for some of my lucky listeners and followers. Um, It's a 20% discount on your ticket to attend. If you guys go to mydivorcesolution.com, there is a a link there for you guys to sign up for the event. And the special code that you use is my name. It's Wendy Sterling, and you will immediately save 20%. I got that right. Right, ladies? Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. You guys can go ahead and find that. There will also be a link in the bio. There is also a link on my Instagram. I've got it on my website under events. So it's everywhere for you guys to get access to. It's going to be amazing. I hope to see so many of you incredible listeners there. Catherine and Karen, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being on today's episode and for doing the amazing work that you guys do. It is invaluable and I cannot wait to see you guys and meet you in person finally in a couple months. (laughs) So excited. Thank you so much. So excited. Thank you. Of course. And everybody tuning in today. Oh my goodness. So much great information. I love every single one of these hacks that Catherine and Karen shared with you guys today. Again, things I wish I knew. So with every episode, I always aim to try to arm you guys with information, any nuggets of information to help you wherever it is that you guys are in your divorce process. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at wendy at wendysterling.net. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode, sending you all tons of love, light, and joy as always. Bye, everybody.